Former President Trump vowing to replace Bidenomics with Maganomics and restore prosperity if elected. The Bonson Group founder and CIO David Bonson joins us now. Look, when Trump took over, inflation was 1.4 percent. How do we get back to stable inflation of about 2%? See, what I want is economic growth that it was like before the financial crisis. The problem through the Obama years, inflation was low in the Obama years, but Mm -hmm. so was economic growth. Uh, President Trump saw 3% real economic growth in 2018 after his tax cuts, after his deregulation, right. after his energy independence. That's the supply side portfolio of policy I believe in. Mm. Lower taxes, lower regulation, more energy. Um, I'm not a big fan of the tariffs and so forth, but my point is overall, President Trump is a very supply side oriented thinker. I think you can get prices lower by supplying more goods and services. Mm -hmm. You can't control demand. Consumers want to spend money. That's what they are there to do. But you need more supply. And that's what I think lower taxes and regulation Mm -hmm. does. You mentioned taxes. President Biden wants to let the Trump tax cuts expire. He wants to take money out of the pockets of American families. And they're saying that that will help tame inflation. I understand the bizarre logic there because people won't be spending that money and putting it back into the economy. But I would counter them and say, rather than taking a thousand dollars from, you know, a low income family, wouldn't it just be better to stop the government spending? Well, of course, it would be better to stop government spending. But we should get back to the economic fallacy that by saying giving people less money to spend means you'll put prices lower. Mm. It also creates less goods and services. It exacerbates the supply problem because there's less incentive for producers to produce more things. The more of our hard-earned money that we have to spend on, the more incentive there is for people to produce. That puts Mm -hmm. downward pressure on prices. Everyone talks about the great moderation of inflation in the Reagan and Clinton years. What was it started by? Lower tax rates. It incentivized a greater production of activity. That's what wealth is, is the output of goods and services that enhance our quality of life. Let's go to Fed. We're waiting the Fed decision here coming up. Uh, We got the news today on CPI. It was not as bad as expected. We're all wondering, how does the Fed read this and how does it affect their decisions? What do you make of it? So my view on the Fed is not conspiratorial. It's just realistic. They already know they need to get rates lower because there are trillions of loans that are going to mature, trillions Mm -hmm. of dollars of loans that are going to roll over at higher rates in late 24, early 25. They know that the inflation deal we have now is not about their interest rate policy. Mm. They want to get it lower, but they need cover. It doesn't look good to be cutting rates when CPI is coming above expectations. Mm. The problem, Brian, is the rate, the CPI was 5.4% in shelter with goods. Yes. It's deflation. We're negative year over year inflation with, uh, with, with goods. goods. It's the, nobody believes rents are really up five and a half percent year mm-hmm. over year. Mm. It's a fallacy in the way that they calculate it. The Fed knows this, but they need cover. Jay Powell, I don't think is a very political actor. I really right. don't. Okay. And and so I think that they're looking to get two rate cuts in. I do not believe the markets now say over seventy percent September. Yeah. I think it'll be one in November, one in December. Just to avoid the headache of okay. people thinking a quarter point was somehow uh, about the election. Okay. You were talking about the Fed though. Financial conditions now are looser than they were when the Fed started hiking because all of our equities are near record highs. Mm. That's a flaw in how they measure financial conditions because mortgage rates at 7% and uh, the, the tenure at 4.5%, that's obviously much tighter. Uh, but credit spreads have come in a lot, and that's mm-hmm. because markets are forward-looking. Nobody believes they're going to stay there, so equities, credit spreads, price mm-hmm. it in ahead of time. And the Fed is frustrated. They liked it last year when financial conditions were tightening and it was doing some of their work for them. Mm. But right now, it's true. Things are gotten looser because everybody kind of knows where this is headed. The Fed is an accomplice in big government spending. The government can't afford all this debt. That's the bottom line. I've always said since this started that I wouldn't want to be Jerome Powell because he's in such a tough spot. He doesn't want to be political, yet he's trying to implement his policy while he's fighting with an administration that just wants to keep spending, spending, spending. It makes it really tough. Um, I agree. It's tough to be a central banker right now because you're kind of hated by both parties. (laughs) Maybe that's the way it should be. Poor, poor Jerome Powell said nobody. All right, right, David, we so appreciate your time today.